I came on here uh, when it was a very small company and it was just like, how can we start putting in the right policies and procedures to be able to scale higher fast enough, make sure our engineering team was moving at a good pace. Can you discuss or tell me like, what were the biggest things coming out of that? You, you thought to yourself, this is what we have to do in order to scale Jackpocket. When Todd and I started talking about how do we move to CICD and just like adopting DevOps culture, it was like, how do we get everybody on the same page? So then we read Accelerate and then we started like kind of pushing it onto the teams and seeing the progress we could make. We knew that we needed to track Dora metrics. And so we were looking for a tool that would help us be able to track that information and then also easily relay the information to the rest of the team. If you can't measure a goal, it's going to be really hard to improve it. So we found Sleuth and tried it out and just found it was really easy for us to, to see where we stood on all the Dora metrics and then also like where we're making progress. Before we started using Sleuth, way more often than not, we would have to roll back a release, fix some things and then try to push it again the next day. So now we're encouraging to release more often, which automatically makes our batch sizes smaller. Because the batch sizes are smaller, we're seeing a lot less frequent rollbacks. And with a, a service-oriented approach, we have, I don't know, 50 or 60 repos, let's say, that get deployed. So this gives us like one place we can go to to just aggregate all the data. Just say, this one is doing this, this one's doing that. And you know disseminate the information to the appropriate teams in a really easily digestible way. So when you're working with the, you know, when you talk about disseminating the information to the, the teams, like how do you operationalize that? Do you have like a review session where everybody looks at it together or how does that work? Yeah, we have a, a bi-weekly review session. So usually we start out at the team level. All the PRs that went out from the members of this team, this is the aggregation of that data. If there's a drop in one of those metrics, then we can dig in through the logs on that dashboard page and say, oh, this is where the incident occurred. Let's click into that and see, oh, why was that incident open so long and drill down to the bottom of it. Do you mind describing a little bit about like what that process looks like and what services you guys are doing to support that? Just know that like when you go to 7-Eleven and buy a ticket and then you fill out the bubble sheet and then you hand it to the cashier and then he runs it through the machine and then a paper ticket spits out of a special printer. That's what we're doing, just at an enormous scale. So all that is backed by software that's using anything from Rails and Elixir to C++, Kotlin, Python, with uh, like machine learning on it and OCR detection for validating that we bought you the right numbers, etc. So all that software is running and it's all being deployed independently. Uptime is a different thing, right? Up uptime or like performance for you is really like around being able to deliver these tickets and being able to like record and understand it. So how do you guys think about and measure that? Yeah, so scalability for us has different bottlenecks, I think, than other SaaS products. I mean, we're constantly reviewing where our bottlenecks are, um, especially on high scale events, big lotteries over a billion dollars, let's say, uh, where we have a lot of new customers and a lot of people buying tickets on the same day. And so we're tracking that load and finding out where those bottlenecks are. Like any other, you know, manufacturing process, your bottleneck is going to change. You know, you fix one and you move on to the next one. So have there been any surprises, like things that you didn't expect to get from Sleuth that have surprised you? Like, oh, it's an unexpected benefit. I'll say the one that I used uh, is when I was trying to get everybody to use incidents right. and people were not using them. <laughs> uh, I would go check on the uh, response time or recovery time. And then I would know there was open incidents. And then I also saw we were doing some weird things with alerts. So then it like it led me to go like, why is this one team doing something a little odd instead of actually just doing incidents in certain ways? That has helped me get everybody kind of on the same page where normally I would look through the services or whatever and then try to figure out what's going on, who's using things. But that that was like a, a initial surprise that it was kind of like a single pane of glass for me to look at. 